Welcome back, fitness and self-improvement fans, to my channel, Rob Nerlin Fit, where my goal is to motivate, inspire, and educate you guys. Today's episode is going to be an education one, as well as a slight rant. So what's the rant about? It's basically about these natty, natty or not witch hunters utilizing and employing a scientific, uh, an article published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine by the Harvard uh, Medical School, and utilizing this one study as their Newton's flaming laser sword of truth to just tell whether a person is natty or not. The rant's not about how there are YouTubers and just haters out there employing this strategy to try and find more likes and views, and part of the reason why I'm doing this, maybe it'll help out. But the problem I truly have is just they are not even using or understanding this article even closely. So basically I'm going to break down a couple of the huge errors they're making when they step out to justify this natty, non-natty accusation. So what was the purpose of this scientific article? At a very high level, it was a group of doctors and PhDs that tried to devise a very simple test that anyone could do that would help determine whether a person was using anabolic and androgenic steroids or not utilizing them. And, as the title of the article suggests, fat-free mass index in users and non-users of anabolic androgenic steroids, they created the fat-free mass index. And this was basically a mathematical number and output that would be derived from a simple series of inputs. And the number that you received at the end after entering all these inputs would basically determine whether you were using or not utilizing anabolic and androgenic steroids. Okay, so ignoring for and not even taking into consideration that most of these scientific studies which try to determine an upper bound for human potential is kind of crazy. Like, for instance, do you not think over the last 50 years diet and training has not improved to help increase the fat-free mass index? I mean, what happened, you know, back in the 60s? What did you say? I said we need a water break. You need a water break. Water is for cowards. Water makes you weak. Water is for washing blood off that uniform, and you don't get no blood on my uniform. Boy, you must be outside your mind. As we all know, there's only one human being that exists that can improve and beat everyone without water. And his name is John Cena. So we can just breeze right through this. We don't have to get into the math too much, and there's not really even that much math and there's barely any inputs. All you really take are your height, your body weight, and your percent body fat. And you enter these numbers into a formula and it'll spit out this final answer for you. You can find out your fat-free mass by taking your body weight and then subtracting the total amount of body fat that you have. So if you're a 200 pound guy, you got 10% body fat, that means you have 20 pounds of fat, that's 200 minus 20, you're 180 pounds fat-free mass. You get a little fancier after that to get the fat-free mass index or the FFMI. You just take your fat-free mass and you multiply it by the root of your height. And then the final thing that they do is they normalize everyone. They normalize everyone to a height of 180 centimeters, which is like 5'10". To do that, they just run a little quick, simple, linear uh, formula. And then basically, it just says everyone in the sample is 5'10". Pretty easy. Okay, so now we got an understanding of the FFMI and the calculation that gets involved. And let's just uh, delve into some of the biggest problems I have and the biggest mistakes that people are making when they're using this article to help them differentiate between, say, the natty versus the non-natty. Okay, so what's the first egregious error these people are making? They are walking away saying that the maximum upper bound of human potential as measured by the fat-free mass index is an output value of 25. An FFMI of 25 is the maximum upper bound of human potential. And the people that do this are basically right in the abstract up to the second sentence where they say, normalized fat-free mass index values of athletes who had not used steroids extended up to a well-defined limit of 25. Case closed, right? I mean, this is written by doctors and PhDs from Harvard Medical School and stuff. So they say, that's it. All right, but wh wh where does this 25 even come from? Well, it comes from a sample set of 156 individuals sampled out, that were just athletes, sampled out of 
gyms in Boston and Los Angeles. So that sample set is pretty crappy and it doesn't really capture or even come that close to looking at what the maximum upper, upper bound limit of human potential is. And the researchers understood this. So what did the researchers do to try and cherry pick and select some of the best genetic potential of all time? They went back and they determined the fat free mass index of all Mr. America winners from 1939 to 1959, the pre-steroid era. Now they've created a control group what would be considered some of the genetic elite in the world. However, people will still take the information from this article and mess it up and they will walk away by saying that the natural upper bound limit for human potential is an FFMI of 25.4. Where are they getting this from? They get it from the very next sentence in the abstract, which is, similarly, a sample of 20 Mr. America winners from the pre-steroid era, 1939 to 1959, for whom we estimated the normalized FFMI had a mean FFMI of 25.4. Okay, I really shouldn't have to explain this or go much further, but a mean FFMI is the average FFMI of that control group. Okay, the average. The article even gives you the mean of a 25.4 and the standard deviation that goes along with it. This is a normal distribution. So, what you know is that about half the people in that control group are going to be above and half the people are going to be below. Okay? That's, that's how it works. The researchers inside the article even go by specific name of the winners of the Mr. America and their actual normalized FFMI. So you can go see 11 different competitors that all scored higher than 25.4 and they are inside the control group, the control group being the non-steroid using control group that helps determine the upper bounds of human potential. Okay, so those were pretty egregious errors people were making before. Just calling 25 or 25.4 on the fat free mass index as the upper bound. Anyone above that symbolic and androgenic steroid user. That's absurd. And yourself, do people even make those? The answer is yes. There's a ton of people out there that just plug people's numbers into the fat free mass indicator calculator that they have online. You can just go Google right now. There's a bunch that'll pull up. You can just enter your own inputs, find out your FFMI. All that being said, I want to point out another error that people often make that's more subtle but still pretty egregious. So assume for a second that some people come out and they'll understand that uh, the, the Mr. America group is the best control group to use. And then they will understand that 25.4 is in the upper bound because they know what an average is. They know that there were people that got above it inside the control group. So they might go out and say the highest number in that group was 28. You know, anything above 28 is the upper limit. Okay. But, he, but here's the mistake that they'll do. Someone will just go, hmm, I wonder if The Rock is on steroids. Then they'll just go, enter his numbers into the fat free mass indicator, it'll spit out a number, and they'll compare that. Now the big problem that people are making when they just grab a random person and compare them to the Mr. America winners is that they, you can only truly compare these people when the person you're going to enter your fat free mass index number into is in competition level body fat percent. If you just grab a person who's around 12% body fat, it kind of breaks the model down. And here's the reason why. In order for an individual to finally attain that competition level percent body fat of 5% or less, they need to subject their body to considerable, considerable distress. They need to operate in a severe caloric deficit for an extended period of time. Now, the human body doesn't like to do this, and it will fight back. It will enter something called survival mode. While in survival mode, the body knows that it's not receiving adequate calories and nutrition every day to maintain itself. So one of the mechanisms it will employ is it will attempt to lower the individual's basal metabolic rate, the amount of energy and calories required just to exist and maintain itself each day. The way the body does this is it begins to prioritize and burn even more muscle as opposed to fat 
while in the survival mode state. You will continue to still burn fat, but as you get more depleted and lower uh, body fat, and you have less caloric stores and energy sources in your fat cells, your body will start to prioritize and burn more muscle. The reason for this is because it takes more energy for your body to maintain a pound of lean muscle as opposed to a pound of lean fat each day. The caloric demands needed to maintain a pound of lean muscle will vary from individual to individual, but will be in a range of somewhere between 40 to 70 calories per day are required to maintain a pound of lean muscle, while something around seven calories per day are required to maintain a pound of fat. Although the numbers may vary and it, you can find different information on the internet, <coughs> The key takeaway is that roughly five to 10 times more calories are required to maintain a pound of lean muscle as opposed to a pound of lean fat. So while in survival mode, your body in an attempt to lower the daily caloric needs of the body will start to burn additional muscle because that requires more energy every day. As the body knows and it's smart, it starts to realize it's not getting enough calories, enough nutrition every day, it will lower the caloric needs that it has every day by beginning to burn additional muscle. So because the body operates this way while in survival mode, natural athletes who are attempting to achieve that 5% body fat competition level leanness will suffer a huge loss of lean muscle tissue and will disastrously affect their fat free mass index as a result. One of the biggest, if not the biggest advantages of employing androgenic and anabolic and androgenic steroids to a pre-contest cycle is the muscle preserving nature of the drugs. These will not block, but they will mitigate a lot of the lost muscle that is caused when the body is operating in survival mode due to the severe caloric deficit that the athletes are putting themselves under. So the big takeaway and the rant I have and the error everyone makes is unless the individual you're going to put the calculate the FFMI for is competition level body fat, which barely any of them ever are that a lot of these natty natty or not people are looking at. The model breaks down. You can't compare versus the Mr. America group for all of those reasons I just mentioned. Because the researchers even mentioned that this test can't be used for people who are like pretty excessively fat. For example, if you just go into a calculator right now and throw in someone who's 5'8", 275 pounds and make them 40% body fat, they're going to come out with an FFMI of about 25.6. That's in the steroid zone. but. Do you think you need that to be 40% body fat at 20 to 275 pounds? No, it just doesn't make sense. So that was a bit of my rant. At the end, I just want to say, what can you really take away from this article? You can't run out and just say there's a number that's an upper bound for human beings. Even they kind of mention that in the article. And also you should take away that in order to use this and compare versus the uh, Mr. America winners, your subject should also be a comparable. They should have the same amount of percent body fat be in contest shape. Really all this article is kind of saying is, and they'll even kind of mention at the end is, hey, the use of anabolic and androgenic steroids will help you put on more muscle and be bigger and have more lean muscle than a person who doesn't use it. Wow, what a shocker. That's what you can walk away with, all right? You can't say 25 is the upper bound. You can't say 25.4 is the upper bound. You really can't even say 28. The highest Mr. America number is the upper bound. Anyways, hope you guys uh, learned a little something here. And if you liked it, like the video, subscribe, and come back for more later. Thanks. Bye.